this sort of activity is big business and child exploitation is big business generally. It attracts organised crime because some of the aspects of the money involved through setting in, selling images rather through child prostitution and child sex tourism. There's an article called uh, Conspiracy of Silence, which you can find at the website on the slide. All right, so um, we've talked, we've seen a little bit about um, what child abuse rings might do. They produce material like that. It's quite disgusting. Um, but they also um, sell images, uh, trade images. You've heard in a number of cases that, uh, that have been fairly extensively um, advertised in the media for the successful disruptions and, uh, and um, arrests of a number of individuals. Um, you know, libraries of up to thousands of images, hundreds of thousands of images <coughs> on computers and traded between groups of individuals. Uh, I don't understand it myself. I don't understand how people can do that sort of thing, um, especially where it involves children. Um, child prostitution is a big problem. It's a problem not only in um, in some less developed countries, but in some uh, some more developed countries as well. We'll have a look at the video later that uh, that shows uh, some activity uh, in Europe in particular. Um, we've mentioned sex tourism, and we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go through. But what is child prostitution? It involves instances where a customer may negotiate an exchange directly with a prostituted child or through an intermediary. The intermediary controls or oversees the child's activities for profit. Um, clearly a pimp, for want of another way to put it. Now the provision of children for sexual purposes may also be an object of exchange between adults. Many children are prostituted over the internet with the use of webcams to facilitate the transmission of images. And child abuse material is linked to, um, to prostitution in most cases. So it's the definition. Uh, definition of child prostitution <coughs> can be found in the op optional protocol on the sale of children, child prostitution and child pornography to the Convention on the Rights of the Child. The child prostitution is where a child hires out his or her body for sexual activities in return for remuneration or any other form of consideration. Remuneration or other considerations could uh, be provided to the child directly or to another person. 158 countries are parties to the optional protocol uh, at August 2012 and undertake to protect uh, children from prostitution. Child prostitution can take a number of guises. It can be things like sale on the streets, for example, but child prostitution usually takes place in particular environments. Brothels, bars, clubs, homes, particular streets and areas, usually in socially run-down places. It's difficult to be precise about figures, but some statistics that are concerning suggest that approximately 10% of prostituted children have a pimp, and more than 45% got into the business through friends. Sometimes it's not organised, sometimes it's just a, a by chance activity, and sometimes it is organised, small scale through individual pimps, and on a larger scale through extensive criminal networks. Sale online occurs as well, approximately one in seven youths online between the ages of 10 and 17 have received sexual solicitation or were approached online. 4% received aggressive sexual solicitation. 34% have an unwanted exposure to sexual material, pictures of naked people or people having sex. Children revealed that 27% of these episodes of unwanted exposure to sexual material to a parent or a guardian, and children reported 42% of the distressing encounters that made, made them feel extremely upset or afraid to a parent or guardian. It's probably fair to say that a significant number of children who are exposed to these sorts of things online don't report it to anybody. 
through fear or through concern that they've been that they'll be uh, in trouble for looking at things on the, the internet that they shouldn't be looking at, regardless of whether they're innocent uh, of any wrongdoing in that themselves. So a little more on child sex tourism. It is linked to child abuse material, as we spoke about before, but it also can involve the sale of children with prostitution, or into prostitution rather, and murder. Child sex tourism is defined as a commercial sexual exploitation of children by men or women who travel from one place to another, usually from a richer country to one that is less developed, and there engage in sexual acts with children defined as anyone under the age of 18. In Australia, the Criminal Code Act carries specific offences for Australians travelling offshore to engage in child sex tourism. It has an extraterritorial application, so it means that we can investigate, the AFP can investigate, Australians travelling overseas to engage in this sort of activity. The delimitation is that it must be Australians travelling for the uh, extraterritorial component of the Criminal Code Act to apply. So the forms of child sex tourism <coughs> include generally adult men who travel to less developed countries for the purpose of engaging in sexual exploitation of children. There are examples of organised uh, sexual, uh, sorry, child sex tourism uh, holidays, for want of a better way to put it, being actively organised by individuals uh, for other people so that they can travel overseas, be put into contact with specific people overseas for the purpose of procuring children for sex. Some women engage in sexual violations. They represent though less than 5% of the sexual offenders. So it may be organised and structured. It may involve organised crime, or it may be a conspiracy between a traveller and a person at the destination who procures the child on their behalf. It may not necessarily be that the traveller is a dedicated child sex tourist. It may be that they have a, a specific preference for children as sexual partners or not. But it may be also that they simply take advantage of a situation that confronts them whilst they're travelling. Some of the key factors of conditioning behaviours for child sex tourism, generally to less developed destinations, poorer economic conditions in those destinations, favourable exchange rates, which make it easier for more people to travel, um, and relative anonymity. You can imagine somebody who's involved in this sort of activity um, not wanting to travel to a place where they may well be known, they've seen by the people that they know, um, whilst engaging in this sort of activity. So they're looking for uh, the places where they can engage um, and not be known. The sad part about some of this is that it's a cycle. The activity fuels greater activity. Visitor, visitors demands for sexual uh, sex acts fuels the further provision of this and it's something, uh, something that uh, continues to, to grow. But it's worth noting that sex the sex tourists are not just holiday makers, they're business people, transport industry workers, military personnel. They can be people from any walk of life. Sex exploiters are not necessarily foreigners, as one can be away from home in one's own country. But nevertheless, the trans transnational character of child sex tourism uh, that's served to highlight the issue Globalised cycle crucially interlinked with trafficking in women and children, the pornography industry, and a connection with organised crime. 